It's time to dish. Kentucky Derby, a week and a half away at DeRosa to be joined by David Levitch. We're here in the Louisville area. The Paddock Prince is ready for the temporary Paddock at this year's Kentucky Derby, the temporary Paddock Prince. But we got a big, uh, big week ahead of us. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We got night racing, kickoff, Churchill Downs card, um, meet on Saturday. Then we got a day off, and then we got five days leading up to um, Oaks and Derby next week. Yeah, so Two days off. Oh, yeah, two days off. You're right. Then we got Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, you're right. No Keenan. day off for you, though. I know you'll be handicapping that Champions Day card on Sunday. Where's that at? Am I missing some? That's what they call Wednesday. Oh, in Tuesday, 502 day. 502 Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, and Champions Day is Wednesday. I didn't know, I didn't know when that's what Wednesday was called. In like two years, it's going to be five days of Derby. Oh, I mean, I'm surprised they haven't asked for an extra week from Keeneland yet. No, I know. And speaking of that, we got three days left at Keeneland. They got good. They got good cards the next couple of days, actually. You are having a much better meet than I am at Keeneland. I'm happy to say because people actually pay for your selections. So uh, that's probably how it should be. I've actually I've been race to race. I, I think I've had some decent opinions. Like I don't feel like I've totally whiffed. Finding the winner though, especially if you're against the favorite, it's tough. I mean, when there's three or four horses who can win. You got to land on the right one. But uh, I saw you had a pick five last weekend. And I think the racing has been really interesting and and for the most part formful, uh, which keeps me coming back. Like I'm never totally scratching my head at the end of a day, even if it hasn't gone well. No, I think Keeneland, I think the meet has been really good this year compared to the last couple spring meets because of the turf situation at the fairgrounds and the Gulfstream turf went good. I feel like every time I open the book, the form, there's 12 horses plus in every turf race. So I feel like the fields have been really good. It has been chalkier than normal. There has been an occasional upset here and there like Keeneland usually produces, but it has been, I would say, more formful than the past. Um, my kryptonite sprints, turf sprints, and they run a lot of turf sprints, so... I haven't fared well in those, but outside of that, I've been doing all right. And actually, I would say that's probably been my best. Not necessarily turf sprints, but usually there's one that's part of the all-turf pick three, uh, one turf sprint and two routes. And of all my bets, uh, that's the only one where I'm even close uh, to having a good meet. And I, I'm actually up on the all-turf pick threes, but have given it back and then some on the other bets. But yeah, I mean, you said it, having those turf options with the full fields at least gives you a shot. If you connect, uh, you're going to get a good payout. Uh, we'll see if that is the case at Churchill with its turf. Shouldn't be an issue opening week. Uh, God forbid it is. That would be a real problem. But uh, the turf racing will continue in Louisville at least uh, through opening week. Big stakes races on Oaks and Derby Day. Derby, we've talked a lot about it. Uh, the, the field's pretty much as is and has been for the last few weeks. Blazing Sevens out, Jace's Road in, and you think Jace's Road is in there to set the pace. I mean, I would think after the Louisiana Derby, when Kings Barnes got an easy lead, Jace's Road just kind of sucked up. He got, I guess he got enough points to get in, but with them having the same owners of Angel of Empire, I, I feel like this time they're not going to really rate the horse. When you have two horses in a race, you want to set it up for the other and give Jace's Road his best chance to win, which is clearly sending him to the lead because rating him did not work with Kings Barnes and Louisiana Derby. So that'll give him his best chance and add some more pace to the Derby. I know your boy Skinner's not in yet. He's getting closer. He just needs one more. One more. One more. Now, you don't like the jockey on him, though, right? Do you? He's won the race three times. Okay. Well, one of them was American Pharaoh. Right. One of them was California Chrome. New was Hall the other one War Emblem? War Emblem, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was like three when that happened, so I don't really remember that race. But the last two he's had, I don't know. I, I think he's a really talented horse. He's just had some really, really tough trips. Now, with a bigger field, if he gets in, maybe some more pace could help him out and he could get a – you know, get a long sustained move. And I, I believe me, if he's 30 to one in that race, he's better than four or five horses, lower odds than um, he would be. Right. Yeah. That I definitely agree with that. And yeah, I'm probably a little more bullish on him than you, but for me, it's like, okay, if he's 25 or 30 to one, I'd rather play him than, you know, Derma Kings Barnes. They're all going to be in the Derma. Eight. I mean, Derma is going to be eight or 10 to one. I actually think he, I'm not a morning line maker, but he might be lower. 
the way people. He might be lower. Absolutely, he might be in the six to seven. I don't know. It depends how they bet Forte, I guess. All right. Uh, well, speaking of Forte, one of three for Pletcher. The other that we haven't mentioned is Tapa Trice, who you and I are both bullish on. Would probably be my top pick uh, if I had to make one right now. Uh, I just like the fact that he's what he'll be six to one. Uh, his stable mate will be half of that. Uh, so you get a little better price. And I, I thought the bluegrass sort of telegraphed their thoughts for how they win this race. I don't think they're looking to go last to first in the Derby. No, I'm sure they're going to try to get position out of the gate mid pack and get him a clear run in the outside. Cause once he got on the outside in the bluegrass and got, on the back stretch, he started to make a long move and he just he just keeps coming and coming and he looks like a horse that ran much more professional, uh, obviously, than he did in the Tampa Bay Derby. Mm -hmm. His numbers are going up. That was a 99 buyer, whatever numbers you look at. They've went up big time in that race. He was a lot more professional. I think he's the most talented horse in the race. I don't know if post draw really matters for him. Obviously, you don't want to be like stuck inside probably like one or two, but if he's right. anywhere mid pack to even close to the far outside. I don't really think it'll matter for him because the way he's yeah. going to try to get him to the outside. I agree completely. I mean, especially if now, if we were talking like, Oh, this is a race. There's so much speed. He can go from last to first. I would say even the one wouldn't matter because you just drop back and scrape paint until you need to find room eventually. But we just said that, you know, we think he's going to be a, a little bit closer. He's going to have a bluegrass type trip if they want to win and to me, from the rail with his style, that would be a lot more difficult than even from the 20. So uh, post important for all to some extent. But I think Tapa Trice with what we saw in the bluegrass, especially important for him at a short price. Like at 40 to 1, if I liked a horse, I wouldn't care about the post. You get what you get and roll the dice at a big number. But for 6 to 1, I, I definitely want to be comfortable with the post position. Yeah, and he's a horse that can looks like he can run all day. So if he does get some ground loss into the first turn, I don't really think it's a horse. He's a horse a type horse that's really going to bother him if he has to run a little farther. Because you know he's by tap it, he shows no stamina lacking ability. So I don't really think the trip's going to matter as long as he gets to the outside and it's not dead last. Like I saw the pace projector actually. I was looking at this day on time form. They got him way way back, and that is, I find it hard to believe they're going to put yeah. him back uh, especially Saez I, I just think he'll he'll be closer and I mean if happenstance he's way back into the first turn uh he's he's still gonna make his move down the backside I, I, I think him in Angel Empire or Angel of Empire very similar style horses I just think mm -hmm. Tampa Trice is a better horse than he is yeah, but no, I, feel, I agree I mean I if, like if they're on even terms at the quarter pole I know who I'd want to win the sprint for home how do you actually, you know, every year is different depending on your opinion, who you like, long shots, et cetera. But typically, how do you actually bet the Derby? Like what? what's your, I try to hit the try, super, win only. Like what What do you do? I don't know. The Derby is such a hard race with 20 horses. It's one of those you don't want to, if you don't really have a strong opinion, you don't want to get too involved. And then you look back at it and you're like, man, I was just trying everything. So I really try <laughs> to find, a, you know, like a win bet if I really like the horses with enough value play some exactas and then maybe play some tri wheels, but I'm not really a super guy. But like I said, in the Derby, if you can, if you're a super guy and try guy and you can hit it, obviously usually pays a lot, but that's not my style. So I usually go win bets with some exactas and maybe even a daily double into the next race. Ooh, well they do have uh 14 for your wagering pleasure on Derby right. day, 13 on Oaks. And that was a good segue. Cause I did want to ask about the Oaks Derby double, 380 combinations, assuming a full gate for both, 14 by 20. And this Oaks taking some lumps in terms of the, the talent in there. But it's anytime you line up 14, I feel like there's opportunity wagering-wise, especially now that Wonder Wheel's in. She's going to suck money, and I don't like her chances. Uh, so that's a takeout reducer. Brad seems to have the heaviest hand, but I know you and I are uh, – maybe both keen on a horse coming up from the bayou. Yeah, I don't know about wet paint. I mean, I mean, you probably should use her, but she's also a dead closer. She's been running at Oakland, and I really don't. If you've been paying attention, I know they're stakes horses. You've been paying attention to Oakland and Keeneland. I don't think those horses have fared very well at all. So I don't know how strong the Oakland circuit is. But like you said, I like Southlawn a little bit for Norm Cassie. 
Um, I haven't decided if that's who I'm going to pick, but I think he's a horse. She's a horse that um, she's two for two this year. She's really come back good as a three-year-old. This will be a third start of the year. I think she's got some good upside. And, like, you know, if she had a maybe like a Pledge or a Cox, I think she would probably be in the five to six to one range. But we <laughs> might, with Wonder Wheel being in the race down, we might get 10 to one maybe. So eight to 10 to one. No, and I actually uh, use that angle quite a bit. I'm not sure if I've had success with it yet, but uh, practical move to me it sort of fits that same South Lawn angle. And granted, Tim Yachtin does have the Baffert Association, so maybe that seeps in a little bit here. But if Bob Baffert trained the San Felipe Santa Anita Derby winner, this horse would be favored. I completely agree. With it. And I think there, there's nobody's really talking about him. I think another thing is he's not even here yet. So I don't know. You know, nobody's right. really seen him on the ground jet jogging with the works in the morning, and even on the show they do every day. So nobody's really even talking about him yet. But I agree with you. If that was Baffert coming from California, I don't know what he I guess he's going to be the third to four choice in the Derby, probably him and Derma. But yeah. if that was Baffert, he's probably he might even be the favorite. Right. No, and uh, he's was like one of those. I'm not, I wouldn't be thrilled if he were a short price. I, I'd hold my nose and know he could beat me while I bet others. But at eight or 10 to one, I'm not going to pick him, but I definitely think he's better value than Forte, uh, especially since throughout the year, sort of said, okay, the, the San Felipe was maybe the best prep to date. Santa Anita Derby, the, the numbers were comparable. I know it was only a nose back to sort of an unknown with Mandarin Hero, but Skinner was third. Like, And the fact that those two aren't in here keeps the chatter even more reduced on that race. Just, just feels like an overlay. Uh, I can't ignore the horse. I'd ra- To your point, I'd rather use him than Angel of Empire or Derma. Yeah, and he's much faster than Angel of Empire. And, like, you know, we don't know what to do with Derma. I know you don't like him. I'm well, sorry. It is, I mean, to, to, to talk about him as the second choice. Do you think he'll be paced? I don't know who could who could be excited to bet the UAE Derby winner is the second choice in the Kentucky Derby. Oh, and you know he's going to be bet just because of the Japan success. No, I know. And that the Breeders' Cup and the turtle. Out for sure. But I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I kind of was with you. Then I was like, maybe I'll start to look <laughs> at him. But then I really started to look at him. It's just like, eh, eh. he can beat yeah. me, I think, at this point. It's if Skinner gets in, maybe I don't hate him enough that like I wouldn't want to completely blow up a ticket if Skinner's there with Derma. But I don't know. There's just so many ways to go. You can't use them all. So I I just feel like he'll be on the outside for me. What do you think about um, what do you think about botanical in the botanical in the um, Oaks? I was looking at her Her numbers are good on synthetics. Obviously, Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting. And obviously they're running against different fields, but it's kind of a a good line on maybe how accurate those numbers are for two fills. Uh, I'm not a two fills guy. If she runs well, then, you know, maybe that says, okay, maybe these numbers were, were right. I worry about take, I mean, she's going to be a way shorter price than two fills. She'll be second choice, right? Second or third choice, yeah. I, I, it depends how they bet Wonder Wheel. No, well, that's true. I, I think even as the favorite, I, I'd say I like Wet Paint better than Botanical. But yeah, she's just a wild card. I was looking at her; she never ran on dirt. But I, I think I think the Ashland uh, winner, v- very similar, I guess, to the San Anita Derby. The the winner I like a little bit, um, and she'll actually probably be a decent price now that Wonder Wheel's in even though she laid the egg in the Ashland. But Punch Bowl and Julia Shining, I would be interested in either one in the Oaks at their expected prices. Julia so. Shining, yeah, no, I agree. I, I think both of them would be major players in the Oaks. It's just the way the point system is and the way that Julia Shining had to get second in the Ashland and Punch Bowl beat her. I think Julia needs two and Punch Bowl needs four. So Punch Bowl really needs a miracle. Yeah, she's – She's probably not going to make it. Uh, Julia Shining might. We'll see. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I can't think, oh, I hope these two get in. And then the winner of the race, who's going to be a longer price than either of those two would be. So, uh, to me, that at least defining purpose uh, is going to have to be in the mix. Black Eyed Susan will be a good race. Yeah. Baffert will probably. Is is that where uh, Faze is going? What's her name? Fazia. Fazia. Yeah. Yeah. Fago um, soda. 
I don't know. That's weird. He never transferred her. He never what? Transferred her. Oh, well, the owners said they were going to be loyal. Yeah. I mean, that's nice of them to be loyal to Bob. <laughs> but no, I agree with you. She goes to the Black Eyed Susan, Julia Shining Punch Bowl. That could be a good race, it looks yeah. like. So. All right. Well, we are, what, 10 days away? 10 11. Away. Well, 10 from Oaks. We're talking about the Oaks, so we can go 10. Oh, okay. 11 from Derby. And you'll have, how do you do it? Churchill meat, the wheat package? I got the meat package up. We'll do um, individual days every other day. But meat package is up for Churchill. Belmont Park opens next Thursday. Mm -hmm. I know the Naira people are getting excited because we've been at Aqueduct for 10 and a half years now. <laughs> so it'll be exciting to get back to Belmont yeah. next Thursday. All right. So Belmont opens on Thurby. On Thurby. You think Belmont calls their opening day Thurby? I would say they say join us for opening Thurby. Yeah, I wonder if the crowd's the same. Mm, maybe a little lighter. You know yeah. who opens on Kentucky Derby Day? Tell me. Louisiana Downs. Doesn't Oakland close on Kentucky Derby Day? Yes, so does Tampa. Tampa. I forgot Tampa. So it's a big day. It is a big day. Be a big day for us. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll dish one more time. I heard you're doing the Flatter podcast this weekend too. Tomorrow, I guess we'll be yep. talking about um, Churchill races this weekend, and I guess we'll see what we got at Aqueduct. Maybe to see what they got going. But yeah, we'll be talking about the Churchill and then the Derby next week. All right. A lot of chatter. A lot to dish on. We'll be back next week. Good luck.